The first six months of 2020 have been dominated by the coronavirus pandemic and the significant impact it has had on everyday life, on society and on our economy. Falling public revenues and the rising public costs of dealing with the pandemic and its economic impacts mean that Jersey is moving into a budget deficit situation, which is likely to last for several years. This has meant there has been a need for a renewed fiscal strategy, which has to take this reduction in income into account. We will also need to reduce our expenditure where we can and borrow to fund the immediate costs of the pandemic response. We will have to take action to balance our finances with the aim of closing the deficit by the end of the period 2021 to 2024. One of the most important roles during the pandemic has been to respond quickly to the rapidly changing financial situation and support islanders and businesses through it. As we've moved into the recovery phase for the island, we introduced our fiscal stimulus package, which is providing timely, targeted and temporary support. We know there will be much more adaption to and investment in these challenging circumstances as we move through 2020 and into 2021. I am extremely grateful and proud of the way everyone within government and across the community has responded to the demands of the pandemic so quickly and professionally. The initial impact of COVID-19 on Jersey was extreme and immediate, affecting nearly every islander and every business. We recognise that keeping our economy working, protecting livelihoods and providing stable finances was essential to ensure islanders' long-term economic, physical and mental well-being. As a response, we move quickly to put in place the biggest financial support package the island has ever seen. Through deferrals in GST and social security payments, the creation of a business disruption loan guarantee scheme and the special situations fund. Critically, we also introduced the government payroll co-funding scheme, which has now supported over 10,000 claims with £63 million pounds worth of funds being paid out to date to keep islanders in employment. In July, we announced a series of fiscal stimulus measures designed to restart our economy in the aftermath of the pandemic, providing a much needed injection of cash into local businesses. That £150 million pound package includes £100 pound prepaid cards for every adult and child on the island, a proposed reduction in employee social security payments from 6% to 4%, and a £50 million pound fiscal stimulus fund for capital projects training and skills development. We also acted to address the practical ways that the pandemic was affecting businesses and islanders during the lockdown. We work with telecoms companies to ensure that broadband capacity was increased to every premises on the island. We work with Jersey Business and other frontline organisations to understand the impacts of COVID-19 on employers and giving them a way to provide important input into our safe exit framework. We facilitated the continued provision of lifeline flights operated by Blue Islands to enable essential travel for medical patients, essential workers and those requiring travel for compassionate reasons. And we supported Digital Jersey with the swift transition to digital working, allowing the state's assembly to be the first parliament in the world to meet completely remotely, as well as supporting schools and delivery of online lessons and supporting remote working across a vast sector of the economy. Jersey has a robust and dynamic economy and it's because of that, because of the fortitude of businesses and islanders that we have been able to manage the crisis. So I would like to thank you all for your efforts and look forward to coming through the pandemic when we can return to normality and rebuild our economy once again. While our primary focus has been on the unprecedented risk of COVID-19 to Jersey, this does not mean we've ignored the ongoing challenges and opportunities presented to the island by Brexit and new global relationships. We've developed our Brexit unit into the new International Trade Unit, who manage extensive cross-government work reviewing the opportunities for Jersey from the UK's future trade negotiations. This ensures Jersey's interests are understood and effectively fed into the UK's discussions on a future EU-UK partnership, 
and into the UK's negotiations of new trade agreements with countries like the USA and Japan. Ministers have continued to meet regularly throughout the Covid crisis to provide direction on these matters. Our London office is continuing to support the promotion of Jersey's constitutional position and interests through UK political engagement and I have continued my engagement with UK ministers and parliamentarians in recent months by holding frequent online meetings. In view of the UK's departure from the EU, resources to engage directly with EU member states have been enhanced in addition to those already provided for by our overseas offices in Brussels and Caen. Ministers have also continued to build Jersey's trade and cooperation links with countries outside of the UK and the EU by delivering the government's global market strategy. The Global Markets team achieved its target of negotiating three international agreements in 2020 and work on new agreements is already well underway. The team also represents Jersey at multilateral events including with the OECD and the Commonwealth, raising Jersey's profile and ability to engage with and influence key international stakeholders. The Financial Services Division continues to play an active part in supporting preparations for the next Moneyval assessment. They have also supported our vital financial services industry, which has shown its strength and resilience in these past months. This includes ensuring workable lockdown and restricted worker provisions for the financial services and legal sectors, and working with the JFSC and JFL to ensure the economic impact of COVID-19 on the financial services industry is understood and mitigations put in place where appropriate. I'm confident that despite the challenges presented by COVID-19, we are continuing to do the essential work to ensure our global reputation is upheld and our critical financial services industry continues to thrive as the key industry underpinning our strong economy.